Welcome to Hudson Raider football on the River Channel. I'm Chris Larson, my buddy Joel Eby. Missing this week, he had some things to take care of. He won't be here with me tonight, but I think you're in good hands with myself. And uh, do not adjust your television screens. This is not Newton Field. Uh, we're at a neutral site tonight over at Dore Field in Chippewa Falls. It's a decision the WIAA made uh, earlier this week. And uh, with Bayport, a team hailing from the Green Bay area, uh, they decided it was too far to travel. So we're at a neutral site location. A lot of folks around Hudson not happy about it. But one thing to keep in mind, the uh, number one seed in the bracket, Appleton North, last week had to host their first round game uh, up in D.C. Everest. So. It's something that uh, it's not just a knock against Hudson. It's one of these deals where they just don't want kids traveling all the way across the state to come and watch a football game. And uh, the WIA made this decision. And I think uh, one thing that the Raiders can think about going forward here is that uh, if they're able to come out here with a victory tonight and they end up playing Appleton North, there's a good chance we'll get a neutral site game next week as well. But enough about that. Let's talk about tonight's football game. We've got 8-1 eight and, win, eight and one Bayport. And Bayport is a passing team. They're able to throw the ball up and down the field. They average about 170 yards a game rushing and about 160 yards a game passing. So they mix it up. It's a balanced offense. It'll be something that will challenge this Raider defense tonight that's been so good. The Raider defense this evening comes into the game averaging under 10 points a game on defense. And Bayport's another team a lot like the Raiders that uh, have been in some blowout situations throughout the season. Uh, they were scoring big time points against their opponents. And over the last few weeks, things have slowed down though. Bayport entered the last game of the season. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but the crowd in front of me, the Hudson crowd has just erupted as the Raiders have come onto the field. We're about ready to get going here. We're about five minutes, six minutes away from game time action. The Raiders have come onto the field to get ready for the national anthem. But as, as I said, uh, the Bayport squad has put a lot of points on the board this season. They've put up 56, they've put up 55, 63, 49 points. But if you look at their last two contests, they lost to Green Bay Southwest. They went into that game, both teams, Green Bay Southwest and Bayport, were 7-0. Bayport was ranked number four in the state in Division I in that game, and they fell to Green Bay Southwest 21-13. Last week, they took on D.C. Everest. They won in that game 19-17, but trailed early on in that game 7-0 before coming back to win that contest. Of course, your Hudson Raiders in here tonight at 9-0. Big wins all season long. Kenosha, Bradford, uh, Menominee, you name it, they beat them. They knocked them down last week. Their first round playoff game against Eau Claire Memorial, Raiders routed them 31 to nothing. So we've got two big time football programs going head to head tonight. The Raiders in here, it's a level two game. They have never been to the level three of the playoffs. So this is a football team though, as Joel Eby has said several times throughout the season, this may be a football team, as, as far as Joel's concerned, is the best Hudson football team that he has seen. So if there's anybody that's going to break through and get to that third round, this is the team. And this is what Coach Adam Cowles has been doing. This is why he's been uh, scheduling teams like Kenosha, Bradford, so that when this football team gets to situations like this, they're not scared. They've played in big games before. Uh, they've taken on teams like Kenosha Bradford, taken on teams like Wisconsin Rapids. They play the tough teams, so when they get to these tough teams in the playoffs, they've been there, they know that. Let's talk about the Raider offense. They come into this game averaging well over 300 yards a game and rushing. Let's uh, pause for a moment. Katie Meyer from Hudson will sing the national anthem.
that doesn't give you goosebumps, I don't know what will. Incredible performance from Katie Meyer of Hudson, Wisconsin. And now, introducing tonight's starting lineups. As, uh, as said before, the Raider offense comes in here outrushing opponents 308 to 62. So again, rushing offense, the strength of this Hudson Raider team. Rushing defense, the strength of the Hudson Raider defense. Dan Lochte on the season, 124 carries for 721 yards and 17 touchdowns. That's an average of 5.8 yards per carry for Dan Lochte. He's got some other guys behind him that have also been big time players for this Hudson Raider offense. Guys like Blake Amborn, Joe Kelly, Wade Malika. This Raider offense has been running on all cylinders this season from the run game. Mike Holmes, the quarterback, also with some big runs this season. 94 carries, 609 yards, eight touchdowns. The Raiders don't do a whole lot of throwing. Holmes with 266 yards passing. The other quarterback, Blake Amborn, also with some yards passing. He's played quite a bit this season, as has all of the uh, second team Raider football teams, football uh, players, second and third teamers, with the Raiders winning so many games by such a wide margin. There's been a lot of players that have seen action throughout this game. That's a big reason why we come into this game here, this playoff game, with not a lot of injuries. It's a healthy Hudson Raider football team and a team that's ready to play a football game here in the playoffs. Round two, level two of the WIAA playoffs set to begin. The Hudson Raiders taking on the Bayport Pirates. Bayport comes in, their quarterback, Colton Peterson. He's thrown it 132 times this season. He averages about 15 passes per game, um, 1,358 yards, 17 touchdowns, three interceptions, doesn't run it a whole lot. He's got 27 carries for 197 yards. They're running back. The Raiders kind of run by committee at Bayport. They've got one guy that carries the load. It's Alec Ingold. Ingold with 168 carries on 32 yards last week. 5.2 yards per carry, two touchdowns through the season. 973 yards, averaging 6.2 per carry with 21 touchdowns. Looks like the Raiders will be kicking off first and this is something the Raiders have strived on this season, kicking off, getting their defense on the field and setting up field position for their offense. These kickoffs from Sam Somerville have been quite deep, but we've got some cool weather here tonight. Temperatures in the mid thirties, a little bit of a slight breeze out there, about 10 miles an hour. So it's cool out there. Uh, they say the wind chills around 29 degrees. Sam Somerville set to kick off. We're going to play some playoff football here on the River Channel. Kick is away. It's going to be a short kick fielded at around the 15-yard line. And the Raider special teams covers up like they have all season long. Joe Kelly in there. The Raiders just have allowed nothing on kickoff returns all season long. We're about to see that vaunted Hudson defense to take the field right now. Jake Benoit in there, Alex Burgess, big season. Jared Johnson on the line. You got guys like Stuart Burns, uh, Miles Lewis in there at corner. Jake Shaw, linebacker. Bayport, first possession of the night. They start from the shotgun and they will hand it off and it's going to be a short gain, probably a pickup of three or four yards there on first down. They'll give him three, and it'll set up second down and seven. That was Alec Ingold with a gain of three. So Bayport spreading it out with the shotgun and running out of the shotgun. Haven't seen these guys on tape, but uh, I've looked at the numbers. They throw it around. It's a lot of deep passes when they do throw it. Most of their receivers are averaging 15 yards per catch. And Peterson set to pass, and it's deflected at the line of scrimmage, and that will set up a third down and long. That Raider defensive line, the last time they faced a big passing offense was Menominee a couple weeks ago, and the Raider defensive line dominated that football game. 
already off to a good start here. I believe that was Johnson getting his mitt up there and knocking that pass down. Third down and seven coming up for Bayport. 11-18, clock stopped in the first quarter. And Peterson in the shotgun. Surveys the field, throws it downfield. And it's gonna be incomplete. Looks like it was dropped by the intended receiver, Peyton Armstrong. And Armstrong is the leading receiver for Bayport. He's a six foot five big guy out there. He had 95 yards and a touchdown last week. 40 catches for 663 yards on the season with 10 touchdowns. So he's a big play receiver, big target out there. But Bayport will send the punt team out there. Miles Lewis and Dan Kelly back to receive for the Raiders, standing at around the 41 or 42 yard line. Clock stopped at 11-11 in the first quarter. Snap is good, and the kick is blocked. Blocked by Alex Burgess. Burgess picks it up, he's into the end zone. Touchdown Raiders! The Raiders special teams and defense have delivered all season long and do it once again here. Alex Burgess all alone back there. It was a nice snap, got to the punter, but he didn't get it off and the Raiders out to a six to nothing lead. The offense hasn't even been on the field yet. Somerville comes on to kick the extra point. Mike Holmes will hold. So with 11.05 left in the first quarter, the Raiders get on the scoreboard right away, leading it six to nothing. Snap is good. Kick is gonna be no good. Somerville misses it. He has not missed a lot of kicks this season, folks. I think he's only missed maybe two or three all season long. Somerville's been ice when it comes to extra points. One thing to think about here as well as this game goes on is uh, Bayport has struggled with the extra points. They missed two of them last week against D.C. Everest, but uh, tough one there for Somerville as he misses the kick. And another thing to think about here, too, is it's a field turf field. Not that we haven't played on them this season. Menominee has the same field. Rice Lake has the same field, but uh, Eau Claire as well. And, uh, but Chippewa plays on a field turf field, and that may have had something to do with it. Not sure. The snap looked good and uh, just kicked it wide left. Either way, the Raiders leading it six to nothing with 11.05 left in the first quarter. And that kick coverage team that has been so good all season long, about ready to take the field once again. Alex Burgess on the season, 33 tackles, one forced fumble and five sacks. And he's been huge in the big games. He had a big game against Menominee and already with a huge play here tonight against Bayport. And if you can get it done on special teams and defense, it makes it a lot easier to play offense. So Sam Somerville set to kick. Hudson Armstrong deep to receive for Bayport. Somerville on his way. Another high kick. Going to be fielded around the 12 yard line by Bayport. That's Peyton Anderson. And Peyton driven and taken down by a host of Raiders. The uh, Hudson Raiders have been gang tackling on special teams all season long. Once again, do it here. We've got a man down on the field, though. We have a man on the field in pain. Let's see what we end up with here. That was Peyton Armstrong on the return for Bayport. Can't tell who it is on the field, but Coach Cowles coming out there. He's taking his helmet off. Well, it looked like he had taken his helmet off, but I guess he still has his helmet on. Coming up off his, on his own power, Jake Shaw. But uh, Shaw able to run off the field under his own power, so. He looks to be all right. He's waving off the coaching staff saying, guys, I got it. Not sure what exactly happened, but uh, so far it looks good. We'll keep an eye on Shaw's status throughout the game. Bayport back out in the shotgun. Peterson hands it off around the right side, and they've got some yards there. Picks up about nine, and that's Alec Ingold. Nice run there for Ingold on first down. He's going to pick up 
Yeah, nine yards will set up a second down and one for Bayport. They'll give him eight. Ingold picked up three on his first carry of the game. So far, that's the only yardage Bayport has come up with tonight. And they'll give it to Ingold once again. Ingold makes a move. Check that. That is Brock Broberg on the run there. And Broberg will have the first down. That will move the chains. So first and 10 now coming up for Bayport. Ten oh eight with the clock ticking here in the first quarter. Hudson Raiders leading it six to nothing. And looks like they tried to hand it off to Ingold, but we've got flags on the field, and I'm guessing we're going to have some motion here. And it will be on Bayport and we'll turn a first and ten into a first and fifteen. The last time the Raiders were in the second round of the playoffs was back in 2009. That was the other team that won the Big Rivers Conference. That was the year they shared the championship with Menominee. Uh, they went over to Stevens Point in the second round and lost that football game. And again, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, the Raiders win tonight. It'll be the first time in Hudson High School football history the Raiders have advanced to the third round. Peterson looking to throw. Peterson's got time, gets it out there. He's got his man, he's open. And on the way to the end zone is Peyton Anderson. And he's into the end zone for a touchdown. We've got a tie football game at six apiece. And if the Raiders have an Achilles heel, it is the coverage on some of these passes. And if Bayport uh, is going to be able to have any kind of success in the Raiders tonight, it's going to be through the passing game. The Raiders' defense against the run has been pretty much lights out all season long. But this is one thing that Bayport does well is throw the ball. So this is gonna be something we're gonna see tonight. I think Bayport's gonna take some shots and try to get in the end zone with the pass. And again, Stewart Burns gets in there. Flags on the ground, but the Raiders had some heat there on that kick. Let's see what the call is going to be. And it's going to be encroachment on the Raiders. That could be why Burns was in there so fast. So now Bayport will, they're sending some different personnel in there. They may go for two. Bayport has struggled. Once again, they've struggled with their extra points. So now that they've actually get about a yard and a half out of this, they're going to go for two. Bayport missed two extra points last week and already bounced this one off the upright and since they get a free yard and a half they're going to go for it here peterson once again in the shotgun ingold next to him and they'll fake the hand off to ingold peterson tries to get in there i don't think he got it let's see what the officials say i've yet to see an indication and now they give it to him interesting call they waited five six seconds before they Mark him in, but they do give him the two points, and Bayport takes an eight to six lead. So 9.31 remaining in the first quarter. They've already got 14 points on the board. The Raiders scored on that blocked punt early in this football game, and Bayport answers with a long pass down the right sideline. There's a Raider penalty on the extra point, and that was enough to send Bayport's two-point team onto the field, and they're able to convert with Colton Peterson taking it on the keeper right up the middle, and uh, he got it. And that's, that's one of those deals right there where the penalty can really hurt you. The Raiders have had those penalties a few times this season, but uh, usually the, the opposing team just goes ahead and kicks it again. This is a team in Bayport that struggled with the extra point, and they decided, hey, We've got an opportunity from a yard and a half out. We're going to go ahead and give it a shot, and they get it. Again, that may be another product of uh, that missed extra point. If you've got a seven on the board there, you know they may decide to go ahead and kick the extra point anyway. With a six on the board, they already had the game tied. They went for a lead, and they got it. 
kick is away. Dan Kelly and Mike Holmes back there to receive. Holmes receives it at the 10 yard line. And Holmes spins and he's up to the 27 yard line. Holmes has done a nice job returning kicks this season. He's got a touchdown. We've got Miles Lewis with a touchdown. And Dan Kelly also has a touchdown kick returning this season. Holmes takes it out to the 27, and now he'll take over with the quarterbacking duties on first down and 10 at the 27-yard line. Holmes under center. Dan Lockney will be behind him. Joe Kelly to his right and Blake Amborn to his left. The receivers are Alex Herrick and Chuck Peterson. Holmes tries to get Kelly to go in motion there and get Bayport to jump. Bayport stays home. Now they'll send Amborn in motion and give it to Lockney up the middle. Lockney's still on his feet. He's going to pick up about nine yards on first down. He'll set up a second down and short for the Raiders. Dan Lockney has made a living this season in the Big Rivers Conference doing just that. Hitting the hole hard, bouncing off a guy and refusing to go down. Does it there once again. Pick up of nine. Second down and one coming up for the Raiders. And the Raiders have been running this hurry up offense all season long to get right back up to the line of scrimmage. Holmes under center sends Kelly in motion. They'll kick it out to Kelly on the option. Kelly makes a cutback. He's going to have the first down. It's a gain of about three. That will move the chains for the Raiders. First down and 10 for Hudson, 848 with the clock. Will start ticking as soon as they set the ball here. Holmes will go under center here once again. And Holmes is going to keep it himself, but he's tripped up. And it'll be a short game. It'll give him about a half a yard. A second down and a long nine coming up for Hudson. Holmes will set up from the pistol this time. And Amborn goes in motion. They'll kick it out to Herrick. Herrick wrapped up and pulled down immediately. Picks up about two or three yards. It'll set up a third down and a long six here coming up for the Raiders at the four, their own 46-yard line. Tried the short pass out to Herrick. Third and six, coming up from the Raiders from the far right hash. They'll send Kelly in motion and give it to Lockney up the middle. Lockney's gonna be very close, but I think he's gonna be a hair short. They marked it out to the 47, it's gonna be close. See where they place the ball, where the line judge is standing, he may have it. And I believe they're gonna give him the first down. They do, first down, Hudson Raiders. Dan Lockney just got just enough, and that will move the chains for Hudson. Great crowd made the trip over here. The home side of this Chippewa Falls uh, bleachers here at Doray Field is filled to capacity. Mike Holmes gives it to Lockney once again. Lockney finds a nice hole, picks up eight yards on first down. It'll be another second down and short coming up for the Hudson Raiders. This is the first time we've seen Hudson on offense so far in this game, and uh, they are running the ball with efficiency as they have done most of the season. Second and three coming up, they gave him seven. And now they're gonna give it to Amborn. Amborn in some space. Amborn, first down and more. The ball came out, but he was down before it came out. It'll be a first down for the Raiders coming up around the 25 yard line of Bayport. So Amborn, the run of about 20 yards there on second down and two as the Raiders knocking on the door here in the red zone. Holmes will set up under center. Lockney behind him and they'll kick it out to Kelly. And Kelly's gonna pick up about two or three. They'll give him two. Hunter Fry has come in there for Amborn. Amborn was shaken up. I think he may have fallen on the football on that run. So Hunter Fry, number 11 on the left side of the off in the wing. 
And the Raiders will give it to Kelly once again on the inside handoff. Kelly's going to pick up about six yards, and that will set up a third down and short for the Raiders. Should be around third down and two or three. Of course, where we are in the field here, down around the 15-yard line, they'll call it the 17. Um, the Raiders are in definite four-down territory. Third and three for the Raiders. And Brian Caffin, I believe, jumped the gun. Number 74 has been drilling people all season long, and I think he was a little bit too excited to drill someone on that play. And that will evaporate the third down and three and make it third down and eight. Changes what you may do here on offense, but as stated before, I think this is four down territory for the Raider run game. We'll send Fry in motion, try to get that five yards back. And now they'll send Kelly in motion, and they'll actually Holmes will keep it. Tried to run in behind Lockney, and he got nowhere. Bayport was all over that one. That's going to set up a long fourth down. Flag comes out, though. I'm guessing we're going to have some sort of personal foul with that flag coming out late. We'll see who it's against. Looks like it's on Bayport, and that should give the Raiders a first down deep into Bayport territory. Didn't catch what happened down there, but it was kind of after the play. They drove Holmes to the turf. I'm not sure if it was uh, some unnecessary roughness or maybe someone said something or did something they weren't supposed to say or do. Either way, the flag hits the field, and the Raiders are going to be deep in Bayport territory. I'm guessing we're going to be stepping 15 yards off here. And they will mark it off at the 11-yard line. So the Raiders in a good spot here. They can get a first down at the one-yard line. It's first and 10 at the 11-yard line. 5.49 remaining in the first quarter. Raiders trailing 6-8 to eight in this Division I Level Two playoff game. Holmes sends Fry in motion, gives it to Lockney. Lockney will go forward. Not sure how many far he made. It looks like a pickup of about six or seven. Sets up a second down and four. Clock ticking at 526. 526 left in the first quarter. Raiders knocking on the door here. They'll send Kelly in motion. Holmes will keep it on the option. Kicks it out to Kelly. Kelly stretches for the end zone. Doesn't get it. Should have the first down though. Down to around the one yard line. We'll see where they mark it. Kelly stretched out to try to get into the end zone, but he was a little bit short. And let's see where they mark it here, if they give the Raiders the first down or what we end up with. Looks like they may bring the chains out. We're either gonna have a third and very short, and that looks like what we're gonna end up with. Nope. They're going to bring the chains onto the field here to measure this one. See what we end up with here. It looked like Kelly was stretching for the end zone. Let's see where the sticks end up here. And they give him the first down. First and goal for Hudson. The winner of this game will play the winner of the Appleton North Stevens Point game. And I just got an update from Appleton North. Stevens Point has taken an early 7 0 lead against Appleton North. Appleton North, the number one seed in the bracket. Stevens Point is the four seed. And they'll give it to Lockney. Lockney's into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders! Raiders back into the lead with 5 0 1 remaining in the first quarter. Dan Lockney. Took it around the left side right there behind Brian Caffin. And right into the end zone, he plunges. Raiders out to a 12 to eight lead. And looks like Hudson is going to go for it here. They're gonna go for two and try to get a 14 on the board here after missing that extra point on their last score. Holmes in the pistol, Lockney behind him. And Holmes is going to keep it himself, and Holmes gets nowhere. Bayport is keyed on Holmes tonight. Holmes has not been able to do much in the running game. It appears that uh, 
Bayport has said, hey, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us with Dan Lockney. You're not going to beat us with Mike Holmes. Holmes has been a dangerous threat running the football this season. A uh, lot of speed out there, and once he gets into the second level, it's big trouble for, defense, for the defense. And uh, tonight, the few times he's tried to run, Bayport has not let, let him get into that second level. So the Raiders lead it 12 to 8, 501 remaining here in the first quarter. They scored early on in this game on the uh, blocked punt by Alex Burgess. And now Dan Lockney gets into the end zone for the one yard touchdown. Bayport was stymied three and oh, three and out on their first possession. And on their second possession, they were able to get a first down and then scored on the long touchdown strike down the right side to their number one receiver, Peyton Armstrong. So Sam Somerville set to kick off for the Raiders. And the Raiders lights out kick coverage team on the field. Kick is away, and it's fielded around the 15-yard line by Armstrong. Armstrong hit hard and pushed down. Dan Kelly over there, along with Matt Iverson, and Bayport will start this possession at the 26-yard line. Alex Burgess, Ethan Stanchek, Matt Iverson, Josh Evenson, Miles Lewis, Dan Kelly, Emerson Corum, the defenders for the Raiders. Colton Peterson tried to hand it off, ball on the turf, but I believe Peterson was able to jump on it. And it's gonna be a loss of about five yards for Bayport. Peterson able to fall on it, but it is a loss of five as the clock ticks with 4.30 remaining in the first quarter and the Hudson Raiders leading it 12 to eight. Peterson will set up with trips left, one receiver wide to his right. Peterson looking to throw, looks to his right, under duress and pulled down. Raider defense all over it. And there's our guy, Jared Johnson, pulling down Peterson, loss of six on the play and it will set up a third down and about 20. If you're gonna beat this Raider defense, you're not gonna do it sitting back there in the pocket forever because this pass rush is coming. Two receivers wide to the left and Peterson looking to throw again. Peterson with some time, throws it across the middle. It's gonna be incomplete. Looking for Peyton Armstrong once again and just overthrew it through the outstretched hands of Armstrong and the Bayport punt team will have to come back on the field. Now the Raiders had that error on the extra point try which led to a two point conversion for Bayport but uh, they have been all over in the backfield on special teams during this game. Alex Burgess blocked the punt and Stuart Burns was deep in the Bayport backfield on that extra point. See what they come up with here. Fourth and 20, Raiders look like they're coming. Miles Lewis and Dan Kelly back to receive. They get the kick away and it's gonna be Kelly calling for the fair catch at the 48 yard line. So the Raiders with very good field position once again. And again, that's keyed by the Raider defense. So Mike Holmes and the Raider offense back on the field here at midfield. 3.30 remaining in the first quarter. And the Raiders with this four point lead, that's not a number that uh, makes you feel very safe. I'm sure they'd love to get on the board here and stretch this lead out a little bit. So Holmes will go under center. Dan Lockney behind him, Alex Harrington receiver to the right, Peterson to the left, 
And they'll send Amborn in motion, give it to Lockney. Lockney's got some space down to the 30 yard line before he's taken down. Gain of 20 for Dan Lockney that will move the chains. First down Raiders with 322 remaining in the first quarter. Big run from Dan Lockney and they will bring Austin Koski in here to spell Lockney. Koski, another senior on this senior laden team. 41 seniors on this Hudson Raider football team. They'll send Kelly in motion. They'll give it to Koski. Koski should pick up about three. Driven down hard there, and the Hudson crowd wants a personal foul there, but they're not going to get it. It's going to be a gain of three, though, for Koski. We'll set up a second down and seven. Koski remains in the backfield behind Holmes. Black Blake Amborn has returned after that injury. Amborn in motion. Holmes looking to throw. Holmes in trouble. Holmes going down. Holmes loses about eight yards there on the sack, almost 10 yards. And again, it seems like wherever Mike Holmes has gone tonight, the defense has followed him. Mike Holmes is certainly a big weapon for the Raider offense, but uh, it appears that Bayport tonight has decided that Mike Holmes is not going to beat them. Holmes in the pistol, looking to throw, and I believe this is going to be a five-yard penalty on the Raiders. Amborn moved forward before he went into motion, and that's going to be a five-yard penalty on Hudson. So the Raiders look to have something really going here and had a sack there and now a five-yard penalty. And now they've got a third down and 22 coming up. Holmes will go from the pistol. And Holmes looking to throw. Throws it out there to flats to Amborn. Amborn's going to be well short of the first down at the 38 yard line. And the Raiders will send the punt team in. So it looked like the Raiders were really gonna get something going there on offense, but a sack and then a penalty. And that stalled this drive right out. Clock ticking now at 142. Raiders leading it 12 to eight over Bayport. Level two playoff game from Doray Field in Chippewa Falls. Mike Holmes set to punt, and again, when you've got your quarterback as the punter, there's always a threat. It's high snap, but Holmes gets the kick off. Line drive kick, and can the coverage team get there? No, they cannot. So the kick goes into the end zone, and Bayport will start their next drive at the 20-yard line. Raiders were very close to downing that football at the one-yard line, but just couldn't get there, and now the Bayport Pirates will set up shop at the 20. Raider defense tonight has had two three and outs and then gave up a touchdown on another drive. So first and 10 here for Bayport. Colton Peterson, the quarterback in the shotgun. They'll send a man in motion, hand it off to Ingold up the middle and Ingold drives himself forward. Should be a gain of four or five. They'll give him five, and that will set up a second and long five for Bayport. Clock rolling here at 55 seconds. Peyton Armstrong comes from the sideline with the play. And Armstrong, the number one receiver for Bayport, set up in the slot. Kelly will have the coverage. They'll give it to Ingold. Ingold is going to maybe pick up a yard. Going to be close. And yep, they'll give him about a half of a yard. That's going to set up a third down and short five. Clock ticking at 26, and I don't believe Bayport needs to run another play here. Let's see what they do. They look to be like they're not in much of a hurry here, and I think we're going to go to the second quarter. So the clock ticks down on the first quarter. 
So through one quarter, it's the Hudson Raiders with a 12 to eight lead on the Bayport Pirates in this division one level two playoff game. The winner plays the winner of the Appleton North Stevens Point game. Now last week in this bracket, it was Appleton North winning against Superior 35 to nothing. That game was at uh, DC Everest. And then it was Stevens Point defeating Green Bay Preble 43 to 35 in quadruple overtime. On this side of the bracket, it was Bayport winning against DC Everest 19 to 17. And of course, the Hudson Raiders with a 31 to nothing lead, 31 to nothing win last week against Eau Claire Memorial. There was five teams from the Big Rivers Conference in the playoffs last week. Only two of them advanced. That was our Hudson Raiders and Rice Lake. Rice Lake last week defeated West Salem 52 to 13. They're playing Wapaka tonight in their level two game. Superior fell to Appleton North and Menominee lost in dramatic fashion on a last second throw into the end zone to Lacrosse Logan. Third down and four, Peterson looking to throw. Throws it out there, it's gonna be incomplete. Looking for Peyton Armstrong and nobody home. And for the third time tonight, the Raider defense off the field in three plays. Fourth down and four coming up for Bayport and they will send the punt team onto the field. Dan Kelly and Miles Lewis standing at their own 45 yard line. They will await the punt. The Raiders blocked a punt earlier tonight, which led to one of their touchdowns. The Raiders look like they're coming. And they will bring the pressure, but won't get there. Kick's gonna be fielded by Kelly. Kelly cuts it back, he's across the 50. Flags fly though, and Kelly's tackled at the 20, but there's hankies on the field. I believe we're gonna have a hold or a black block in the back on Hudson. One of the Bayport players was calling for the officials to throw a flag, and they did. I believe the Raiders are probably gonna have the ball at around their own 40. And they're gonna call a block in the back on Hudson. Kelly kind of waited, went around uh, Miles Lewis, and I didn't see the play as I was watching the football, but there's a good chance that was called on Lewis. And actually, they're gonna mark that at the 34 yard line. You see the penalty occurred, now they'll mark it at the 37. So the Hudson Raiders not with the field position they hope to have, a pretty decent field position here. 11.43 remaining in the second quarter, and Hudson leading it 12 to eight. Holmes under center, they'll send Amborn in motion. Holmes looking to throw it, throws it across the middle. He's got his guy, Chuck Peterson. Peterson makes a guy miss, makes another guy miss. He's gonna go to the end zone. Touchdown Raiders! Peterson with the yards after the catch. Great throw by Mike Holmes, and Peterson made two guys miss into the end zone, and the Raiders stretch their lead 18 to eight. Unbelievable pitch and catch. Mike Holmes to Chuck Peterson, and the Raiders on the board once again here with 11.31 remaining in the second quarter. They lead it 18 to eight. Sam Somerville on the field to kick the extra point. Low snap, Holmes is gonna pick it up. Holmes looking to throw it, throws it into the end zone, it's gonna be incomplete. The Raiders lead it by 10. If they could have got that in there, would have led by 11, but uh, the Raiders kicking team has really been excellent all season long, but has struggled tonight. Missed the extra point on their first score and right there, snap on the ground. Mike Holmes didn't feel like he could get it down and uh, attempted to throw it into the end zone, but uh, nothing doing. Either way, Raiders leading by 10 now, 18 to eight with 11.31 remaining in the second quarter. Haven't seen uh, a lot of passing this season 
for Hudson. They've been in control of most of their games and been happy to throw it, but uh, are happy to run it. But tonight we've seen Holmes throw a few balls. He completed one out to Herring uh, in their last, or two drives ago, and that time threw the long ball out to Chuck Peterson. Peterson <laughs> dodged two guys and scampered into the end zone. Peterson has had some long touchdowns this season. Six catches, 138 yards, two touchdowns this season. Averaging 20 yards a catch. Kick is away. That's a deep one. It will go into the end zone. Somerville boots it into the end zone, and it will be a touchback. So Bayport will start this next drive on the 20-yard line. They've started their last two drives now on the 20. And that Raider defense back into the game. Raiders averaging under nine points a game on defense. They've pitched two shutouts this season. And in the first quarter, uh, the Raiders are outscoring their opponents 136 to 14. In the second quarter now. And they will hand it off. And that's their leading rusher there, Alec Ingold. And Ingold with a nice run. He's going to pick up about six or seven there on first down. They'll call it a gain of seven. Brings up second down and three. Ingold had 168 yards last week on 32 carries. Averaging just over five yards a carry. Had a couple decent runs tonight. One receiver wide to the left, one to the right, and they'll give it to Ingold once again. Ingold looking for a hole, able to surge forward. He's going to pick up about two and set up a third down and one for Bayport. Ingold's had a nice season, but uh, Bayport likes to throw it around. Averaging about 165 yards a game on the ground at 165 through the air. Third down and one here coming up for Bayport. Peyton Armstrong, the receiver to the right, another receiver to the left. Armstrong is the favored receiver. They'll give it to Ingold, and Ingold's gonna have the first down out to around the 34 yard line. Second first down of the evening for Bayport. Scored earlier tonight on a long pass play to Armstrong. They've had three three and outs. Armstrong, the receiver to the right. Colton Peterson in the shotgun with Ingold. They'll fake it to Ingold. Armstrong's going to keep it. And he'll get about five there on first down. Peterson averages about three carries a game. And I believe that's his second of tonight's contest. It is. He scored the two-point conversion there earlier tonight to give Bayport that number eight they have on the board. Second down and five for Bayport. And they'll hand it off to Ingold. Ingold going to be close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. Uh, where they mark it, I believe he's going to have the first down. They are going to measure it. Nope, and they'll give him the first down. He does appear to have it from my perspective by about a football. So they'll move the chains once again here for Bayport. 9.02 remaining in the second quarter. The Hudson Raiders leading it 18-8 over Bayport. Bayport into this game tonight, 8-1 overall. The Raiders, 9-0. Here's Peterson once again in the shotgun. They'll send Armstrong in motion. And we've got flags flying. I believe this is going to be on Bayport. And that will back the Pirates up another five yards. 
Turns the first and 10 into a first and 15. Line of scrimmage will be at the 44 or 39 yard line of Bayport. Bayport out of the Fox River Classic Conference. And they hail from the Green Bay area. I believe just north of Green Bay. Peterson hands it off to Ingold. Ingold's going to be wrapped up, pulled down. Ethan Stanchek with a solo tackle. Going to be a loss of two. And that'll give him a loss of one. And Stanchek met him right at the line of scrimmage and drove him backwards. Second down and 16 coming up for Bayport. Again, the Raiders allowing just 60 yards per game on the ground. Peterson looking to throw. He gets decked, and it's going to be incomplete. Jake Shaw drilled Peterson. Peterson on the turf, shaken up, but he does get up. And... Peterson is a big time quarterback for Bayport, but Jake Shaw got into the backfield untouched and drilled him. And Bayport was very lucky not to lose yardage there or end up with a turnover because Jake Shaw delivered a lick on Peterson. Third down and 16 coming up for Bayport. Peterson in the shotgun. Peterson looking to throw. Here comes the rush. He gets the throw away. It's nearly intercepted. Nearly intercepted Sam Somerville on the coverage. The receiver, Peyton Armstrong, did a nice job of turning into a defensive back because that ball was headed right for Sam Somerville. Punt team will come onto the field for Bayport. Keep an eye on, we'll keep an eye on that quarterback because Colton Peterson took a shot there and looked a little bit shaken up that time. 7.30 remaining in the second quarter. Kelly and Miles Lewis back to receive the punt at around the 35 yard line. It's gonna be Miles Lewis taking it. Lewis makes a guy miss, but ran out of room there and pulled down at around the 32 yard line. So the Raider offense will come onto the field with 7-19 remaining in the second quarter and the Hudson Raiders leading it 18 to eight. Mike Holmes will set up under center. Dan Lockney back in the game for the Raiders behind Holmes. Amborn to the near side, Kelly to the far side, Chuck Peterson the wide out to the near side and they will run it up the middle and that is Dan Lockney. The ball came loose but the Raiders have it. Gain of about four. Dan Lockney took it up the middle for four. The ball came loose but the Raiders able to recover. Holmes now working from the pistol. And they'll give it to Lockney up the middle once again, and Lockney's going to pick up about three. He's going to be just shy of the first down. They'll mark it at third down and one here. Really, it's a short one, and Raiders right up the line of scrimmage here on third and one. Run Amborn in motion to try to get him to jump off sets. It won't happen. The Raiders were able to get Eau Claire Memorial to jump four or five times last week. Bayport probably saw that tape. Give it to Lockney. It's going to be close. I think he had it. Looks by it. If you look at the far side, they will give it to him. First down for the Raiders. 6.15 remaining in the second quarter. And the clock will start right now. 
clock rolling at 6.15 left in the second quarter. Raiders leading it 18 to eight over Bayport. Mike Holmes under center, and Holmes on the option is gonna keep it himself, and maybe about a yard. Once again, Bayport really keying on Mike Holmes. They'll give him about two yards there. Uh, Bayport covered that option play very well. Had the outside man, had the inside man. Holmes made what he could out of it, which was two yards. We'll send Amborn in motion and give it to Lockney. Lockney over a couple of defenders. He's gonna pick up about four or five. That will set up a third down and a long three coming up for Hudson. Mark it at the 45 yard line. Raiders are gonna spread it out a little bit this time. Looks like Joe Kelly's gonna line up in the slot out there with Alex Herrick. And they'll send Amborn in motion. And Holmes looking to throw. Gets it out there, he's got Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly in space, he's got a blocker, Alex Herrick. Kelly still on his feet, pulled down at the 10 yard line. Raiders in business down to the 10 yard line. Haven't seen Mike Holmes throw the ball much this season, but he's looked awesome throwing it tonight. Kelly made a couple guys missed and took it down to, looks like they'll mark it at the 14. So first and 10 for the Raiders at the 14 yard line. Clock stopped at 4.59, Raiders leading it 18 to eight. And Holmes will give it to Lockney, Lockney! Down inside the five yard line, still fighting, gonna be pulled down at the three yard line. First down and goal coming up for the Raiders. Bayport has not had an answer tonight for Dan Lockney. First down and goal for the Raiders at the three yard line, 447 remaining in the first half. Holmes under center. Herrick will be the wide out to the left. Kelly to his right. They'll run Kelly in motion. And they're gonna give it to Lockney. It's jammed up in there. Lockney may have got a yard. Yeah, we're gonna give it no gain. No gain for Dan Lockney. Actually give him a short loss. Second down and goal from about the three and a half yard line for Hudson. And Holmes is gonna take it himself. Holmes into the end zone. Touchdown Raiders! Four yard quarterback keeper for Mike Holmes tucked in behind Mike Lockney into the end zone and the Raiders stretch out the lead 24 to eight. Sam Somerville onto the field to extend the lead. Mike Holmes will do the holding. Sam Somerville, the left-footed kicker. This time snap a little bit high, but Somerville gets it up, it's good. And the Raiders extend the lead 25 to eight. 17 point lead with 404 remaining in the second quarter. So the Raider defense has been stout. They've really just given up one play tonight. And other than that, they have not allowed Bayport anything. Raider offense has been equally sharp. And they lead it big, but Bayport, once again, they've put up some points this season. They are a come from behind team if they need to. They can throw the football. They put up 63 earlier this season against Green Bay West. They've put up 55, they've put up 56, and they have another game where they've put up 49 points. Things going very well for the Raiders here in this football game, but I'm sure Coach Cowles is over there talking to those guys. We still have 28 minutes and four seconds of football, guys. Sam Somerville set to kick off for the Raiders. Kick is a high one. Gonna be fielded at the 15 yard line. And that's Armstrong. Armstrong 
fighting through before Alex Burgess pulls him down around the 35 yard line and that's probably the best field position anyone's had all season long coming off a kick return against the Raider kick coverage team. 3.56 remaining in this second quarter and the Hudson Raiders protecting a 17 point lead. Colton Peterson returns the quarterback under some pressure again, gets it out. And it's gonna be a gain of around 10 yards. It should be a first down. Threw it out there to Steve Mensloff. And Mensloff's gonna have the first down. Peterson once again under some heavy pressure. And I think the Raiders are gonna come after him, come after him and try to get some footsteps in his head here. Clock ticking at 344. First and 10 for Bayport at the 46 yard line. Peterson in the shotgun. Peterson looking to throw. Gets it out there to the near side, caught, but pulled down immediately. The coverage over there from Josh Evenson. Got to Minsloff again. It's going to be a gain of around six. Brings up second down and four. So into Raider territory is the Bayport offense. This time, Ingold brings in the play. And Colton Peterson in the shotgun will send Ingold in motion. And under pressure, throws it across the middle. He's got his guy. And pulled down into the Raider red zone. That's Drew Newville taking it down to the 16. Bayport threw it right across the middle at Newville working against the defense and he found a little hole out there. Peterson pretty much had his eyes on Peyton Armstrong throughout the early portion of this game. Now he's throwing it to some other receivers and finding some openings. Armstrong the receiver wide to the left and Peterson will hand it off to Ingold and Ingold's going to pick up about four or five yards on first down. Brings up second down and five down to the 12 yard line of Hudson. Give him a gain of four. Clock ticking at 245. Raiders leading at 25 to eight. And Peterson set once again in the shotgun. And they'll give it to Armstrong. And Armstrong is going to have a few yards. to set up a third down and a long two here from around the 10-yard line. They'll give him about three. And they need to make it to around the six-and-a-half-yard line. Third and three coming up for Bayport. Armstrong wide to the left. And Peterson's going to hand it off to Ingold, and Ingold does not have it. Taken down right at the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up fourth down and three, and we'll see what Bayport does. Doesn't look like they're going to make any substitutions. They're going to go for it here in fourth down. So the Raider defense came up with a couple of big stops in the red zone last week against Eau Claire Memorial with an opportunity here with a fourth down and three and Bayport will call a timeout. So the Raiders with four touchdowns on the board tonight, they missed an extra point and the next touchdown they had, they had a low snap and a broken play didn't get the extra point. Went for two, didn't get it, and then uh, we're able to put the football through the uprights, and that's how they ended up with 25. Bayport with the eight, they went for two after a penalty marked the ball at the one yard line. So that's how we find ourselves here, 25 to eight. 
Hudson Raiders with three offensive touchdowns. They also scored a touchdown on a block punt by Alex Burgess. He blocked it and took the football in himself. Fourth down and three coming up here. Colton Peterson in the shotgun, in goal next to him. Peterson rolls to his left, looking to throw under pressure. Almost pulled down, then taken down. The Raider defense holds tight. Raider offense on their way out of the field. Another incredible job by the Hudson Raider defense. They bent a little bit on that drive, allowed Bayport to get into the red zone, and then did what they've been doing all season long, tightened up and shut them down. Raider offense back onto the field with 129 left in the first half. Mike Holmes will set up under center. The run Amborn in motion and Holmes gives it to Lockney. Lockney spins and drives, picks up about six on first down, and that should set up a second down and a short four. Raiders right up to the line of scrimmage here with 115 remaining. Holmes gets the play, and he will go under center. Lockney behind him. And they'll give it to Lockney once again. Squirts to the defense. He's going to have a first down. And now I believe the Raiders, the clock has stopped as they move the chains here. Let's see what Hudson does. They appear to be, and they will start the clock here with 56 seconds remaining. Holmes still waiting to get the play call in here. It looks like the Raiders are just going to run it here with Lockney, and if they squirt one out, they'll take it. Otherwise, they're going to head back to the locker room with a 25-8 lead. And Holmes looking to throw this time. Throws it over to the edge, and going to be incomplete. Looking for Alex Newell there. Dangerous pass. Clock will stop with 31 seconds remaining. Looking for Alex Newell there, but uh, pass was wide. So second and 10 now coming up for Hudson. I'm guessing we're gonna see a run here. We do, they give it to Holmes, or they give it to uh, Lockney. Lockney's gonna pick up three and I'm guessing that's gonna be it. Well, let's see what they do. Clock taking at 12, 11, 10, and I think the Raiders are going to let it go down. The Hudson Raiders will go into the locker room at the half, leading this football game against Bayport 25 to 8, and the Raiders will be receiving the kickoff in the second half. Crowd on their feet here at Dore Field. The Hudson faithful had to make the hour and 15 minute run over here to Chippewa for this game, but uh, things going well for the home side. We'll be right back with the second half of action. The Hudson Raiders leading it 25 to eight. Welcome back to Dore Field in Chippewa Falls and the Hudson Raiders just 24 minutes of football away from making Hudson Raider football history. Raiders have never advanced to the third level of the WIAA playoffs. They lead it 25 to eight over Bayport. And if they can hold on to that lead tonight, they will be moving on to level three action on the other side of this bracket. The winner of tonight's game will take on the winner of the Appleton North Stevens Point game. And the last check, the last score I heard, it was Stevens Point leading it 14 to seven over Appleton North. That was late in the second quarter. I haven't heard a halftime score yet, but it was Stevens Point 14 to seven over Appleton North. And uh, as far as travel goes, we're not gonna get into that yet. We'll talk about <laughs> what may happen down the road once we get a little further into this football game, we feel a little more comfortable. The Raiders with a 17 point lead, but this Bayport football team is a football team that can put points on the board in a hurry. The Raiders will be receiving the kickoff first. And so far tonight, it's been uh, Dan Lockney on the ground and Mike Holmes through the air. Holmes with long passes to Chuck Peterson for a touchdown, another long pass to Joe Kelly, which, uh, 
got the Raider offense deep into Bayport territory and led to another touchdown. Uh, the Raiders have also scored on a blocked punt. Things going very well for the Hudson Raiders tonight. Uh, they've had four three and outs on defense. They allowed one long pass for a touchdown uh, to Bayport. And then they had another drive in which Bayport took the ball deep into Raider territory before the Raider defense stymied the Bayport offense and sent them off the field on fourth down. So that's how we're here at 25 to eight Hudson. Holmes, Miles Lewis, and Joe Kelly deep to receive the kickoff for the Raiders. And the kick is away. High kick. Going to be fielded on the five-yard line by Mike Holmes. Holmes slides through the coverage out to the 35. Call it the 36-yard line. Nice return for Mike Holmes. Holmes has been tough to handle on kick returns all season long and proved difficult to handle there as the Raiders with some very good field position. We'll start first and 10 here with 11.52 remaining in the third quarter. Holmes will set up in the pistol. Dan Lockney behind him. Blake Amborn to the left, Joe Kelly to the right. Amborn goes in motion. Raiders will fake the handoff to Lockney out. Kicks it out to Joe Kelly. Kelly's got some room. He's gonna pick up about six or seven yards on first down. We'll set up the Raiders with a third down, or second down and short. They'll give him six yards there on first down. And the Raiders will have a second and four. This time, Holmes will go under center. Alex Herring, the wide out to the right. And the Raiders run it up the middle. Dan Lockney. Lockney will get the first down for the Raiders. Raiders with the football out to the 50 yard line. Mark it at the 49. Holmes will send Amborn in motion, gives it to Kelly. Kelly with some space and finally taken down there. They'll give him about three yards, sets up second down and seven. Raiders in that hurry up offense. They don't go into the huddle. Holmes will take the signal from Coach Cowles and set up in the pistol here. Send Amborn in motion. They'll fake the handoff. Now kick it out to Amborn. Amborn brings it back. Amborn makes a guy miss. Amborn still has feet across the 30, down to the 20, to the 15. Finally taken out of bounds around the 15-yard line. Raiders into the red zone. Raider offense picking up where they left off in the first half, running the football. Blake Amborn. Made a guy miss, broke out of an arm tackle, and he was off to the races. First and 10 for the Raiders, down to the 14-yard line of Bayport. Home sets up under center. Will fake the handoff and then gives it to Amborn. Amborn's going to pick up about two on the inside reverse. So bring up a second down and eight. Second eight coming up for Hudson at the 12 yard line. Clock ticking at 10.43. Amborn, or uh, Holmes from the pistol, and they will fake the handoff and give it to Kelly. Ball loose, and it's gonna go out of bounds. Raiders very fortunate. The Bayport defender didn't even bother going for the ball, just went and decked Kelly, and Tried to get one of his teammates to scoop the football up, but it lands safely out of bounds. Kelly stays in the game. Third down and 12 now coming up for the Raiders at the 16-yard line. And Holmes will throw it for Herring. Herring has a touchdown, Raiders! Threw it to the six foot five Herring. He leaped up and got it. Two defenders over there, but six five is going to win. Usually you can't teach 6-5. Alex Herring reached up and grabbed it. Touchdown Raiders. They extend the lead 31-8. Sam Somerville on the field to kick the extra point. 
took the Raiders just one minute, 39 seconds to find Pater. Sam Somerville kicks it through. That extends the lead to 32 to eight, Hudson. A lot of people walking around here in the crowd at halftime saying, guys, we can't let off the pedal. Got to keep going. This Bayport team can put points on the board. And the Raider offense does just that. Run the ball with efficiency and then caps off the drive with a pass to Alex Herring on third down and 12 in the end zone. And the Raiders now leading this football game by 24 points. Hudson does exactly what they needed to do and uh, certainly can feel good about themselves, but still a lot of football to be played here. 22 minutes remaining in this game. 10-21 left here in the third quarter. Somerville will set the ball on the far hash. It seems like they have tried to kick it to Peyton Armstrong each time. He's number 11 and the leading receiver for Bayport. It seems like Somerville has angled the ball his way each time. Here's Somerville set to kick. And it's a line drive kick and it's gonna go to Armstrong. Armstrong fields it at the 15. And looking for some room, not finding any. Pull down Alex Paulson. It was actually Dylan Huss, number 13, who fielded the kick, and Huss taken down at the 25-yard line. That Raider coverage team has been lights out all season long and continue their dominance here in this football game. So here comes the Bayport offense, and you got to think they're going to start trying to throw it downfield here now, trailing by 24 points and they will hand it to Armstrong, and Armstrong stripped by Alex Burgess, the ball on the, foot, on the field. Raiders say they have it. Alex Burgess met Armstrong in the backfield. They will give the football to Bayport. Burgess looked like he was gonna stop him for a big loss. Then it looked like Armstrong was gonna get free, but Burgess stripped the ball clean, but Armstrong was able to recover it. It will still be a loss of four yards and set up second down and 14 from the 21 yard line. And looking to throw, Peterson throws it deep and he's got Armstrong. The coverage out there by Miles, actually Evenson. Evenson actually had him well covered, but uh, Armstrong just went up there and got that football. Evenson had position on him and uh, may have just mistimed his jump. And uh, Armstrong, one of the best receivers in the state of Wisconsin, 40 catches, 663 yards, and 10 touchdowns this season. Uh, made a nice grab on that one for 40 yards. So Colton Peterson now operating from the Hudson side of the football. Peterson. Rolls to his right, under pressure, can't find anybody and throws it away. Great job there by the Hudson Raiders on coverage. And really the Raiders, save for a few plays, have had some nice coverage. There is a flag on the field here. We'll see what it is. Yellow hanky on the far side here and there's a good chance that could be a hold against the Raiders. Let's see what the officials come up with here based upon where the flag is. Certainly wasn't a pass interference because he just threw it out of bounds. And they're gonna call it intentional grounding. Intentional grounding on Bayport. And that should be, it's gonna be a five yard penalty and loss of down and that will make it second down and 15 here coming up for Bayport. So 9-11 remaining here in the third quarter. Bayport trying to get into it, trailing by 24 to Hudson. 
Peterson looking to throw, throws it deep once again. Coverage by Miles Lewis. Dan Kelly able to knock the ball out of there. Lewis had the coverage out there on Insloff. And the ball knocked loose. Miles Lewis had some pretty good coverage on him, but uh, was unable to bring it in. Then Dan Kelly kind of came out of nowhere and knocked that ball loose. So third down and 15 now coming up for Bayport. Peterson looking to throw. Peterson under pressure was a screen. They had it set up well, and the Raiders cover it up. Ethan Stanchek stayed with the receiver, Max Cesar. You could tell the way the pass rush was able to just get through there, that it was a screen coming. Ethan Stanchek stayed home and made the tackle. Fourth down and 12 coming up, but it looks like Bayport's going to go for it on fourth down here. They've got pretty good field position down at the 40-yard line. And if you're going to win this game, you need to convert this here. So pretty good play call here, in my opinion, from Bayport. Fourth down and 12. Peterson fakes the handoff. Peterson under pressure. Jake Shaw pulls him down. The sack for the Raiders will set up the Raider offense with the football on the Bayport side of the field. Jake Shaw with the fourth down sack. And as my partner Joel Eby likes to say, that doesn't put the nails in the coffin, but it's getting pretty stuffy in there. Hudson Raider offense on the field. 8-14 remaining in the third quarter. Tons of time left in this football game. The Raiders dominating this football game. Mike Holmes under center here. And Holmes will give it to Lockney. Lockney picks up five. I think you're gonna see the Raiders starting to take their time on offense now. This is one of those points in the football game where the Raider offensive line has been able to impose their will on their opponents. And they'll give it to Joe Kelly. Kelly makes a guy miss. Kelly's gonna be, they strip the football. Strip the football, Bayport says they have it, and if they do, it's a huge play. Ray, the officials have yet to signal. I believe it's gonna be Raider football. It is. So the Raiders retain possession, gonna be very close to a first down. They're gonna bring the chains out to measure here. The Raiders can hold possession here, take some time off the clock and get into the end zone. It'll be a first down for Hudson. Things are gonna get very, very difficult for Bayport. Bayport brought a nice contingent of fans over here. Two buses came over from Bayport and a lot of other vehicles as well. Pretty nice crowd made the three and a half to four hour trip from Bayport over to Chippewa Falls. Holmes. Under center, we'll give it to Lockney. Lockney's going to get about two. Not much room that time for Lockney. Sets up second down and eight. Dan Lockney's had some big runs tonight. Holmes will set up once again under center. Lockney behind him. Kelly to his right, Amborn to his left. They'll run Amborn in motion. And Holmes is going to keep it on the option. Kicks it out to Amborn. Amborn makes the guy miss, and he's down to the 25-yard line. That will move the chains once again for the Raiders. Pick up of 14 for Blake Amborn, and it'll be first and 10 for the Raiders at the 25-yard line of Chippewa Falls. Yeah, the Raiders are not stepping off the pedal tonight. Mike Holmes under center sends Kelly in motion and they'll give it to Amborn on the inside reverse. Not much doing that time. Loss of about one there on first down. Nothing going for Amborn that time. 
Raiders right back up to the line of scrimmage. Looks like Holmes has the play already. And they're set to go. Clock ticking at 6.38 for Hudson. The run, Kelly in motion. Kick it to Kelly on the option. Kelly trying to make a guy miss. And there's going to be a flag down. I think we've got a hold there on the Raiders. Jake Giordana trying to do some blocking over there for Kelly. And I think he may have a handful of jersey. And it will be a hold. So that will back Hudson up. Let's see where they mark it. Looks like they're going to mark it around the 32-yard line, and that will give the Raiders about a second and 17. So Hudson, second and 17 at the 32-yard line. Holmes steps up under center. Amborn in motion. They'll fake the handoff. They'll give it to Amborn on the pitch. Amborn still on his feet. Down to around the 24-yard line. Going to have about nine yards. will set up third down and eight. They'll give him ten. Well, now they give it third and nine. Give him nine yards. Third and nine coming up for the Raiders, and this is certainly four-down territory for Hudson. They're not able to convert here. Uh, I'm going to guess Coach Cowles will go for it on fourth down. Holmes under center, Lockney behind him. They'll send Kelly in motion and kick it out to Kelly. Kelly cuts back, going to be close to the first down. I think he's going to be just a sh shave shy and should set up a fourth down at about one. Going to be just a little shy, fourth and inches coming up for the Raiders. And the Raiders will certainly go for it here at the 16-yard line. And I'd be willing to bet you're going to see number 44. Holmes barking out the call. Lockney behind him. They'll run Amborn in motion. Try to get Bayport to jump. They flinched but didn't cross the line of scrimmage. Amborn will reset his offense. Send Amborn in motion. Give it to Lockney. Lockney's got the first down. That will move the chains. Clock stopped at 4.56 as they reset the chains, and then they'll get it going again. Third quarter, Raiders leading it 32-8 to eight and knocking on the door here in this level two Division I playoff game with Bayport. First and 10 for the Raiders at the 13-yard line. And they'll give it to Lockney. Lockney's got some space down into the five-yard line. We'll set up a second down and two. Lockney with a gain of eight on first down. And second and two coming up for the Raiders on the five-yard line. And it looks like we've got a timeout on the field. It'll be Bayport. Bayport's in a situation now where they certainly cannot allow the Raiders to get into the end zone here. Raiders have taken about four minutes off the clock. And they're going to huddle up here and have a talk with Coach Cowles. Basically, all it comes down to at this point, fellas, is making sure we don't turn the football over. We keep the handle on the football, and it's going to be very, very difficult for Bayport to get back into this game. Still a little update from Appleton North. Appleton North taking on Stevens Point tonight, and the winner of this game here in Chippewa Falls will take on the winner of that Appleton North-Stevens Point game. The only other Big Rivers Conference team in action, Rice Lake playing at Wapaka this evening. Raiders will come back onto the field now. Second down and two at the five yard line of Bayport. 427 remaining in the third quarter. Send Kelly in motion, they'll give it to, actually Holmes will keep it. He's into the end zone, untouched. Snuck in there behind Brian Caffin. Touchdown, Raiders! Hudson takes a 38-8 lead with 4.23 remaining in the third quarter. Sam Somerville onto the field to kick the extra point. Mike Holmes will do the holding. 
Snap is good, hold is down, kick is up and good. The Raiders extend their lead to 39 to eight. 31 point lead for the Hudson Raiders against Bayport. Keep in mind folks, Bayport was ranked number four in the state going into the final weekend of the regular season. They took on the number four team in Division II, Green Bay Southwest that night and lost in that game 21 to 13. So you're playing a football team here in Bayport that had a lot of respect around the state and the Hudson Raiders are literally taking it to them tonight. Thirty-nine to eight Hudson with four twenty-three remaining. Sixteen minutes twenty-three seconds left in this football game. The Hudson Raiders, the higher seed, were not able to host because of the travel. So we're playing this game at a neutral field here at Dole Field in Chippewa Falls. And the way things look right now, we could have played it on the moon. Hudson Raiders dominating this football game at every phase. Somerville set to kick off. Kick is away, and it's going to be fielded at around the 10 yard line. And Alex Burgess. Gets a hold of him, but he's still on his feet. Emerson Corum giving pursuit along with Kelly. Takes it back the other way, looking for a hole. Miles Lewis and Corum pull him down. That was probably the longest 15-yard kick return you'll ever see. Lots of running east to west, but he's still... Only got it out to the 24-yard line. So it took a while. It was exciting, but it didn't yield much yardage. Raider defense back on the field. Colton Peterson in the shotgun. Peterson looking to throw under pressure and gets it out of there, throws it downfield. Nice throw, but it'll be incomplete. Peterson's got a really nice arm on him, folks. But he has been running over the field, all over the field. The Raider defense doing what they've done all season long when teams have tried to throw on him. They put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and it's tough to throw the football when you're running. Clock stopped at 3.58. Raiders with a 31-point lead against Bayport. Peterson. Looking to throw once again. Has some time, throws it, and it's gonna be incomplete. The coverage over there with Miles Lewis, and Miles Lewis doing a nice job there covering Peterson. Really, other than one or two plays, the Raiders secondary has played a very nice game tonight. They've had good coverage, and really the few times that uh, uh, Bayport has been able to get a few plays, it's just been from great plays from their offense. The Raider coverage has done a very nice job tonight. Peterson, once again, from the shotgun. They'll send a man in motion, and Peterson sets up the screen. This time, they've got some room. They're gonna have a first down. Raiders, that time kinda lost them on the wide receiver screen. The screen they ran earlier to the running back. Um, Stanchek did a nice job of staying on top of it. That one there was just a receiver screen. He came across and uh, able to get some space. First down and 10 here for Bayport. 3.36 remaining in the third quarter. Hudson leading it 39 to eight. Peterson looking to throw. Throws deep and he's caught by Armstrong. Is he out of bounds? No, they will call it a catch. Inbounds and it will be marked at the 22 yard line. So Peterson's been throwing shots down the field all night long. If you throw enough of them once in a while, you're gonna complete them. And Bayport able to complete one there. And they will have the football down at the 23 of Hudson. 
Peterson's got a nice arm. They've got some great receivers. They're going to take their shots, and they're going to get a few here and there. Here's Peterson. Looking to throw once again under some under some pressure and able to be finally pulled down. Able to pick up a couple yards. They'll give him a gain of about three. Raiders had a nice rush coming around their right side or the left side, and Peterson uh, took it around the other way and picked up a couple yards there. Sets up a second down and eight. Clock ticking at three minutes remaining in the third quarter. So Peterson in the shotgun with Armstrong in the slot to the left. Peterson throws it over there for Armstrong. Nope. That is actually number 17, Drew Newville. And should be a first down, and it is a first down for Bayport. So Bayport knocking on the door here. They've been able to bring the football down into the red zone a few times tonight, come away with nothing. Their lone score was on a long touchdown pass in the first quarter. Two receivers wide to the right, and they'll throw it over to Armstrong. He's got Armstrong. Armstrong drilled and taken down by Ethan Stanchek. Stanchek, the linebacker over there in coverage on Armstrong. They will give him six yards there on the play. Sets up second down and a long five. We'll give him five, second and five coming up here for Bayport. And they're gonna fake the run and now they'll keep it himself, will be Peterson. Faked it to Ingold and Peterson kept it himself and he picked up about three. Tackle from Stuart Burns. He's just inside the five yard line. Third down and around two and a half coming up here for Bayport. Clock ticking at 131. Bayport with an opportunity to get a first down here without scoring. Four yards away from the end zone, about two and a half yards away from a first down. See what they do here. And they will throw it into the end zone, and it's deflected. Miles Lewis got a hand in there and knocked it away. Fourth down coming up here for Bayport. And if the Raiders come up with a stop here, I think it will completely demoralize this Bayport football team. Third time into the red zone, and the Raiders have sent them away two other times. Hudson crowd on their feet. Fourth down and three coming up for Bayport. Hudson leading 39 to eight. Throws it over the right side and it should be, I believe it's, believe it's intercepted. It is intercepted by Miles Lewis. It may have been one of those deals where Lewis would have been better off to let that ball hit the ground. The Raiders will come out on offense from the one yard line. Had he dropped that football, the Raiders would have the ball at the four yard line. But uh, either way, Miles Lewis makes a great play and sends Bayport away once again with nothing. The Raiders leading it 39 to eight. And this Hudson Raider defense has shown why they've been so dominant all season long. Holmes will give it to Lockney. Lockney takes it ahead to around the six yard line. Gain of about five for Dan Lockney on first down, sets up second down and a short five, second down and four here. 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Mike Holmes operating under center. And they will, Holmes will keep it himself. And I believe Holmes has got about three. It's gonna set up a third down and short for Hudson. They'll call it about third down and two, two and a half coming up. 29 seconds remaining in this third quarter. And Holmes will work under center. They sent Amborn in motion. 
Didn't get anything going. 15 seconds left in the third quarter. And they will give it to Lockney. Lockney's got the first down. That will move the chains for the Raiders, and the Raiders will hold on to the football. We're going to head down to the other side of the field, though. Four seconds remaining in this third quarter. They will start the clock as soon as the football is placed, and that should end the third quarter. And that is the end of the third quarter with the Hudson Raiders leading it 39-8 to over Bayport. And the Raider faithful holding a number four in the air. We own the fourth quarter. <laughs> to be honest with you, it really hasn't been that way this season in the fourth quarter because we've led by so much going into the fourth quarter that uh, we've kind of let the foot off the gas a little bit. Raiders have led each quarter during the entire season, though, if you look at uh, – how the scoring breaks down, but that fourth quarter is uh, is the quarter that our opponents do the best in, but again, only because uh, Hudson has led by so much all season long. Raiders will enter this fourth quarter leading 39 to eight. They went to half, leading it 25 to eight, and uh, everyone on the sideline and in the bleachers was feeling good about themselves, feeling good about what was going on, but I think everybody was a little bit nervous playing this Bayport team, knowing that they're a high scoring team that's able to throw the football down the field, a little bit nervous, but uh, the Raider offense put two touchdowns on the board and the Raider defense held Bayport to nothing in the third quarter. Mike Holmes in the offense operating first down and 10. They will keep it with Mike Holmes. Holmes around the right side. Holmes in some space out to the 37 yard line. First and 10 for Hudson. Bayport did a nice job keeping control of Mike Holmes in the first half. But here in the second half, Holmes has had a couple of nice runs and that will set up another first and 10 for the Raiders out at the 36 yard line. Clock starts at 11.50 remaining in the football game. Holmes under center. Holmes will hand it off to Blake Amborn, and Amborn picks up five or six on first down. They'll give him six, mark it at second and four. Clock rolling at 11.32. Hudson Raiders looking to finish off Bayport, and I don't think Bayport knew what they were in for tonight. Mike Holmes under center. Dan Lockney behind him, Joe Kelly and Blake Amborn the wings. They'll give it to Lockney. Lockney on his feet, Lockney around the corner. Lockney down the sideline, first down for the Raiders. Lockney stays in bounds down to the 31 yard line. And Bayport just cannot stop the bleeding. Hudson Raiders now imposing their will on the Bayport defense. Holmes will once again to go under center. They'll send Kelly in motion, kick it out to Kelly. Kelly has to cut it back up inside the 30, a flag comes down. Bayport nodding, they believe it's on Hudson. Going to have a hold on the Raiders, so that will back it up. Somebody blocking downfield there for the Raiders. Probably got a hold of a jersey, and that will back Hudson up. Sends him back to the 42-yard line, and will set up a first down and 19 for Hudson. They had one of those in the third quarter and they were able to overcome it. Let's see what they can do here. Raiders have been ripping off big chunks with the run here in the second half of football. Holmes with Lockney behind him, Kelly and Amborn to the side. They'll send Amborn in motion, give it to Lockney up the middle. Lockney still on his feet. He's gonna pick up about four or five there in first down. I'll give him four. So second down and long here, still coming up for Hudson. Clock ticking at 10-18, and Hudson certainly isn't taking their time. Right back up to the line of scrimmage here. Second and 15. They're not gonna allow Bayport to 
catch their breath. And Holmes will give it an inside handoff to Kelly. Kelly makes a guy miss. Kelly down to the 30-yard line. Hudson Crowd wants a late hit. So does Joe Kelly, but Joe needs to just walk back to the huddle. Kelly, a pickup of about seven, sets up third down and nine. And again, the Raiders just chipping away at this penalty. They can pick up six or seven yards here. They'll be good in good position for a fourth down conversion. One thing I can guarantee you is the Raiders will not be punting. Not at this point anyway. Holmes under center. Send Amborn in motion. Holmes will kick it out to Amborn. Ball comes loose. Holmes gets it back and throws it downfield. And there's the intentional ground on Holmes that time. So the officials call the flag there the same way they called it on the uh, Bayport quarterback. There was nobody home there. Quarterback was out of the pocket, but apparently in high school, it really doesn't matter because Bayport did the same thing in the third quarter and was penalized the same way. So I misspoke when I said they will not be punting. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a big penalty like that is going to move you out to a spot that uh, things aren't going to go well. So, Holmes will come off the field. Michael Loncar will come on to punt. Loncar punted quite a bit early on in the season, and then kind of midway through the season, they made the change to Holmes. But Loncar's kicked some very nice punts this season, and he's in the game here to punt. High snap. Loncar fields it, gets the kick away, and boy, Loncar made a great kick when you consider that punt or that snap. <clears throat> and I believe that's why they made that switch to Holmes is they were concerned if there was a bad snap that perhaps Mike Holmes was, would be able to uh, kind of make something out of nothing a little bit better, but Loncar did a nice job of at least salvaging 15 yards there with that punt, but it will set up Bayport with their best field position of the night at the 49 yard line. So Lankar able to get that kick out of there and uh, gain some field position for the Raiders. Peterson under center. Peterson looking to throw. Peterson throws it deep and it's gonna be caught. Armstrong catches it, and he's going to be down to the five-yard line. Kelly had the coverage there, and Armstrong just went up there to get the football and then was able to break a few tackles, and he's down to the four-yard line. And this is what the Hudson Raiders really feared was that uh, Bayport would be able to throw this football down the field like that. Fortunately for Hudson right now, they've got quite a cushion. Nine minutes remaining. Hudson leading by 31 points. They'll hand it off. They'll go around the right side. And I believe Hudson, no, they will give him the touchdown. Ingold into the end zone for a touchdown. Ingold averaging 160 yards a game this season and three touchdowns per contest. Tonight held to under 50 yards rushing and that is his first adventure into the end zone. And Barely made it in that time. Cuts the lead to 39 to 14. Is a 25 point lead for the Raiders. And it looks like Bayport will come out and try to go for two here. They can go for two and get it. They can make it a three score game. Peterson pumps, throws. Peterson under pressure. Will throw it in the end zone. It's going to be incomplete. So the two-point conversion, no good. And the Raiders will hang on to a 39-14 lead, leading it by 25 points. And that is a big time, big time stop because had Bayport been able to convert that two-point conversion, it's a three-possession game. But since they turn them away, it remains a four-possession football game with 8.45 remaining in this fourth quarter. Raiders leading it. 39 to 14. And Bayport, although they've been thoroughly dominated in this football game, 
uh, has not backed down. To their credit, they have not given up. And uh, I would not be surprised to see them come out here and attempt a uh, onside kick. We'll see what they come up with here. Both teams huddling on the sideline, and I'm guessing if I'm Coach Cowles, I'm going to have the hands team out there. Because again, would not be surprised whatsoever if Bayport kicks an onsider here. They will put the football down at the 40 yard line, just off the center X. And Raiders kind of moving their guys up. They're gonna leave Mike Holmes deep, but I think everybody else is kind of moving up. Holmes actually now moving up as well. And it looks like they are set up here for an onside kick. And there's the onsider. And I believe the Raiders had the football. Either way, they have recovered it, and it is Raider football at the 49-yard line of Bayport. And once again, Bayport really has been dominated all night long, and they did not give up. Uh, their coach over there, Gary Westerman, has continued to play this football game to win despite uh, trailing by so many points. 39-14. Raider offense back on the field with great field position at the 49. Raiders will keep it. Mike Holmes. Mike Holmes gets some space. Mike Holmes is going to be close to a first down. They will mark it off. Gain of 11 yards. That'll move the chains. First and 10 for Hudson. Clock will start ticking at 838 momentarily. And the clock's ticking. Mike Holmes waiting for the play call. Coach Cowles sends the play in. Holmes under center. And they will give it to Amborn. Amborn on the inside reverse gets nothing. Actually, it'll be a loss of about two yards. The man on the sticks has it as third down, but it's actually second down. Second down and about 11. Pay no attention to the sticks. And uh, actually, the officials are, are seeing that they're going to let them know it's second down. There we go. Second down and 11 here coming up for the Raiders. Clock ticking, 7.58 remaining in the football game. Raiders leading it 39-14. to 14. All they need to do is hang on to the football. Don't turn it over, and you should be just fine. Holmes under center. And they'll give it to, actually, Holmes keeps it on the option, kicks it out to Kelly. Kelly pulls it in, and he's going to be down to around the 36, 37 yards. Gets about four or five yards, keeps the football inbounds. Clock ticking at 7.27. Austin Meyer with the tackle for Bayport. Third down and around seven or eight for Hudson. If they can get four or five here, Pretty sure they're going to go for it in the fourth down. Clock ticking away at 7.06 remaining in the fourth quarter. Holmes will set up in the pistol this time. And they will hand it off, fake the handoff to Kelly. Holmes keeps it. Holmes is going to get about a yard, and that's going to set up a fourth down and long. And it'll be about fourth down and six coming up for Hudson. And this is probably a spot where Coach Cowell says, I like my offense to get six yards better than I like sending that punting team out there and hoping something bad doesn't happen. Alex Newell comes back onto the field for the Raiders. Matt Johnson, the tight end, comes off the field. Holmes under center, fourth down and six for Hudson. Clock at 623 and ticking. They'll send Kelly in motion, try to get Bayport to move. Bayport hasn't fallen for that tonight. This time they'll send Amborn. Nothing doing. I think the Raiders will call a timeout. Tried to draw Bayport off sides and turn a third down and six into a third down and one. Didn't make it happen. And Bayport, I'm sure, saw Oakland Memorial fall for that thing last week. Holmes caught 
Eau Claire Memorial four or five times last week on that. And I'm sure this defense has been coached up on it coming into this game. So fourth down and six coming up for Hudson. 6-10 remaining in the football game and they lead it 39 to 14. And I would guess if the Raiders decide to punt that it will be with Mike Holmes. But the Raiders have not made any kind of substitutions yet. The offensive players still out there on the field as is Coach Cowles. Once again, six minutes, 10 seconds remaining. If the Raiders can hang on here, they can do something no Hudson Raider football team has ever done before, and that is advance to the third round of playoffs, and no Hudson Raider football team has ever been 10-0. And the Raiders will give it to Lockney. Lockney should have the first down. He's got it. The Raiders will keep the football and the clock will keep ticking down. Dan Lochte needed six, he got seven. First and 10 for Hudson, 6.05 remaining in the football game. And that is something that'll demoralize a defense. That was Bayport's final opportunity really to get the football back and make something out of this. And Dan Lochte, Picked up to seven. Give it to Lockney again. Lockney picks up five or six. Big run for Dan Lockney, and that will put the football down to around the 21, 22 yard line and set up a second down and five for Hudson. 5.30 with the clock ticking, and the Raiders getting closer and closer to that level three matchup. Holmes under center. He's got Peterson to his left. And I believe Newell to his right. And they'll give it to Lockney up the middle. Lockney on his feet. Lockney's going to get to the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders! That will seal the deal. Dan Lockney into the end zone. Touchdown, Hudson. 45 to 14. Hudson Raiders over the Bayport Pirates in level two. The Bayport coaches have just left the press box. That's going to be it. Four minutes left in this football game. But we are just playing out the clock at this point. Sam Somerville puts it through. Hudson leads it 46 to 14 with five minutes remaining in this game. And give credit to this football team and this coaching staff. I think a lot of people made this trip tonight a little bit nervous, but this football team came to play tonight. They came to play. They had some excuses. This game was at Chippewa Falls. They thought it should be. They should be. They thought the game should be in Hudson. They played it here in Chippewa Falls. And it really, once again, the way these Raiders have played, it doesn't matter where they would have played it. 46 to 14, Hudson leads 5.03, remaining in the fourth quarter. I just got an update from Appleton North. Appleton North has moved ahead of Stevens Point. It's 17 to 14. Fourth quarter, 17-14, Appleton North over Stevens Point. If things continue the way they're continuing here at Doray Field, the Hudson Raiders will be playing the winner of that football game. Somerville set to kick. Boom and kick. It's going to be fielded at the five-yard line by Peyton Armstrong. Peyton Armstrong looking for yardage, weaving around. Still on his feet across the 30. And the Raiders finally pull him down at the 40 yard line. And that's probably the best return that anyone has had against the Hudson Raiders tonight. Armstrong took it out to the 41. So Bayport, they'll mark it at the 42 and Bayport will come onto the field here down by 32 points. Four minutes and 52 seconds left to go in our 
So here comes the Bayport offense led by Colton Peterson. Peterson, the senior quarterback, six foot three. Thrown for 1,400 yards this season. Peterson looking to throw. Throws it across the middle. He's got his guy. Will be first down for Bayport down to the 35-yard line. Bayport has had some success here later in this football game between the, between the 20s, but tonight, once they've taken the ball into the red zone, the Raider defense has stymied them. So here's Peterson. And they will hand it off. And they're gonna be pulled down there. Hand it off to Brock Boberg. Boberg picks up three, sets up second down for Bayport. Clock ticking, 420 remaining. Clock ticking at 412. Raiders trying to close this contest out. Colton Peterson in the shotgun. Peterson looking to throw. Peterson under pressure, gets the football out there. It's going to be incomplete. Ethan Stanchek put a hit on Peterson. That brings up third down and seven. Colton Peterson. Looking for Neville on that throw there and overshot him. So third down and seven now. Coming up for Hudson, or coming up for Bayport. Peterson looking to throw. Peterson under pressure once again. Gets it out and a great defense being played out there by Miles Lewis. Just stepped in front of it, stuck his hand out of there and denied the football. And that will bring up fourth down for the Raiders, for the Raider defense. And this Raider defense has just been incredible on fourth down tonight. They have not allowed Bayport anything on fourth down. So here we go, fourth down and seven from the 32-yard line. If Hudson wins it, gets it here, it's over. Peterson throwing it downfield and incomplete. The Raider offense will come onto the field with 347 remaining. And I'm guessing you're gonna see a heavy dose of the run game. The Raiders will send in their reserves here. Blake Amborn will come in at quarterback. Looks like Hunter Fry and Andrew Dickerson on the wings, and Austin Koski will take over as the fullback. Giordana and Herrick will be the receivers, but here's Zastro, and he will hand it off to Koski, and Koski gets nothing. But at this point here, the Raiders are just looking to run clock. Clock ticking, 3.30 remaining, and now Wade Malika enters the game. Koski and Dickerson come out. Matisse, Matisse and Malika in, Malika the fullback. 3.11 remaining, and they'll give it to Malika. Malika is gonna pick up about three or four. We'll take it across the 35 and set up a third down and around six or seven. But again, clock ticking at 256. And Malika comes off the field. Now it looks like Alex Paulson in there at fullback. Coach Cowles trying to get some work for everybody here in this game. Zastro under center, third down, six. 2.35 remaining in the football game. And they'll give it to Paulson. Paulson's going to have the first down. Still on his feet. Bayport's in a foot race. Paulson down to the 30, the 25, taken down at the 20-yard line. Still actually doesn't go down. They have to push him out of bounds. Alex Paulson with an incredible run. 
down to the 20 yard line. They'll mark it inside the 20, down to the 14 yard line. Gain of 50 yards and clock stop 221. Raiders in business here in the red zone and the Raiders are gonna move into the victory formation. This is what they did. What they did against Menominee, the same thing. Zastro set up. Zastro's waiting to see the, the play clock run down, but the clock is stopped. And there he'll knee it. Actually, he's gonna get it for delay of game. And he really should have just snapped it. I don't think you realize that the game clock wasn't moving. The game clock wasn't moving because uh, because Paulson had been pushed out of bounds. But either way, it really doesn't matter. The Raiders are just gonna need the football here anyway. They have, so now Zastro will knee it, and now the Raiders will milk clock here. So the Raiders are gonna advance into the third level of the playoffs for the first time ever. They will play the winner of the Appleton North Stevens Point game. We will have coverage here at the River Channel. Not sure where that football game will be. It really depends on who the opponent is. Astro taking his time here, waiting until that play clock runs down. And here's Zastro will kneel it once again with 138 remaining. I think Bayport will get this football with just a few seconds remaining on the clock. The Raiders did this uh, a few weeks ago against Menominee and uh, Coach Labuda when he took possession with just under a minute left. Coach Labuda also did the same thing, took a knee and got out of town. Clock ticking at 112. Zastro waiting for the back judge to start counting down that play clock. Now you see his arm moving there. That means there's less than five seconds left in the play clock. And Zastro will take another knee. 55 seconds remaining. And this will be fourth down here coming up for Hudson. So they're gonna knee it, probably give Bayport the ball back with around 20 seconds remaining in this football game. But congratulations to the Hudson Raiders. You guys have made history. You've done something no other Hudson Raider football team has ever done. You're gonna go 10-0 and in advance to the level three of the WIA playoffs. Zastro will take a knee there with 24 seconds remaining. The Raider defense will come onto the field here. Bayport has 24 seconds left. We'll see what they do. Coach Labuda, uh, when they did this against Menominee, Coach Labuda came out and took a knee as well, respecting the fact that the Raiders uh, did not run the score up on them. Let's see what Coach Gary Westerman does here of Bayport. See if he does the right thing or if he wants to play around. Raiders showed a lot of respect there for Bayport. Let's see what Bayport does. Bayport lines up in shotgun. Okay. Well, put this in our memory bank. Pirates line up in a shotgun, and they are going to run the football. And that's going to be it. Broberg ran the football, and clock ticking at 15 seconds left. And that should do it. Let's see if Bayport runs another play. They don't look like they're ready to. That's going to be it. Six seconds remaining, clock ticking down. The Hudson Raiders are gonna win this football game. 46 to 14 over Bayport. They go to 10 and 0 for the first time in their history. They advance to level three in the playoffs for the first time in history. The Hudson Raiders are moving on. Congrats to this Hudson Raider football team. There were a lot of people coming over here making this trip with butterflies in their stomach. But the Hudson Raiders football team from the first drive of this game, the defense came out, they stymied the offense of Bayport, they blocked the punt and took it for a touchdown, gave up a touchdown there, gave up the lead, 
momentarily, eight to six, and then came back and never looked back. Hudson Raiders winning this football game big tonight over Bayport. I just got an update from Appleton North. Appleton North has defeated Stevens Point 17 to 14. So the Raiders will take on Appleton North next week. Now where that football game will be, we're not sure. We'll be able to say the same thing to the WIA that Bayport said to the WIA, it's too far to drive. So I'm guessing we're gonna get a neutral field and I'm gonna take a guess. This is purely speculation. Please check your local media this week on where this football game is going to be. But I'm guessing you're going to be going somewhere, Stevens Point, possibly D.C. Everest for this football game. But uh, please check your media before uh, making the trip over. Either way, the Hudson Raiders are moving on, going to level three. They'll take on Appleton North next week. That'll either be a Friday or Saturday game. Steph DeVos, the athletic director, will get on the phone. We'll talk to the Appleton North athletic director. They'll try to work something out figure out a game time, figure out a game, game location. The Hudson Raiders, the number two seed in this bracket against the number one seed, Appleton North. And from what I hear, it just came down to a coin flip. Both teams were undefeated going into the playoffs. Both teams with impressive schedules and impressive victories. Uh, so we've got a number one versus number two matchup coming up. And the winner of that game will play in the state semis. So the Raiders still have two games to go if they want to get to Madison. But either way, historic season here for the Hudson Raiders as they win in level three. The Hudson Raiders defeat Bayport 46 to 14, move on to level three. Congrats to the team, Coach Cowles, the rest of the coaching staff, everyone who's put time in. I mean, the parents, it has been an incredible season following these guys, and it's great to know that the season isn't over. We're still moving on, still playing in level three, two games away, two wins away from a trip to Madison. The Raiders will take a knee as everybody moves through the handshake line here. We'll try to stick with it here. Try to get you your shot with the Raiders coming over to greet their fans. I'm guessing they're going to play this cool and then get up for the sprint. This has got to be one excited football team. Now they're getting ready. Stuart Burns. And there they go. Coming over to see their loyal fans. Hang the camera out of the window here. And the student body came out in pink tonight. They are going to sing a victory song tonight. The Hudson Raiders with the biggest win in their history. Moving on here to level three. We'll see you next week. Hudson Raiders will take on Appleton North. We don't know where it will be. We don't know when it will be, but we'll be there. See you next week.